Dee, Mary, if there was one thought or one message that you wanted audiences to take away from this film, what would it be? What's the most important thing for you? I would say this idea of interconnectedness, how we're all interconnected to each other and to and, and, and to time, like our past is our present is our future, like and then our stories are all, even though we're each a thread, they're all woven together. So, Mary, what would you say in terms of the, the message that you want people to take away from this having watched it? Um, exactly what Dee said, but I, I would say like we're in this together and that at the end of the day, you know, love has no color. Love is the savior. Love is the angel, you know, that's going to, you know, it's not going to come in one, you know, shot, but it's just, it is going to save the day. Originally, this film had difficulty getting distributed. It seems to be addressing exactly the sort of issues that you raise in the film. Yeah, I think because this was like such a huge ensemble cast, you know, and it's like risky material in a way. The thing I love about Netflix is that they're not reductive or comparative, you know, in the way other studios, like they didn't just put this in like a bucket. They didn't even call it like, oh, this is like a race film. They thought of it as a film about family, as a film about life, as a film about, you know, these two families stuck together. And so by not being reductive, by not kind of compressing it, they were able to see the universality of it, like the expansiveness of it. And for you, Mary, playing at Florence was a really big physical change for you, right? Just talk yes. us through what you left behind. <laughs> well, I, I had to leave Mary J. Blige behind, which was beautiful and um, a blessing for Mary J. Blige because once I committed to Florence, it really started healing a lot of me that I didn't even really, really know was still broken. I didn't even know, you know, once you see how Florence lives, you're like, wow, I didn't know I was so vain. <laughs> I own and I own parts are the only way to get up from under their foot. We right there. I don't want you working for them. I won't be working for them. I'll be working for us. So whose idea was no makeup, very... <laughs> and you Dee, resisted it. Dee, because I wanted, you know, these, these, my, my nails are actually this long. Yeah. So I had to cut my nails off. Yeah. And I was like, wow, so um, Florence doesn't wear lashes, you know? She has, I gotta have lashes, so I had to take away lashes. So, you know, I kept trying to sneak little things in there. Dee was like, get those nails out of your little manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, it was all deep. They said, no perm, you know, yeah. no wigs. But it was you edges. that were willing to do that, though. But Most I, actresses wouldn't be willing to do that. <laughs> but I was willing to do it, Dee, because of you. Mm -hmm. I knew you, I, I knew you had, Dee had, she sees better than we see. So I trusted Dee and I said, I'm gonna just go for it something great's gonna come out of this. When I watched it, I, I felt that the film was asking questions about patriotism, about color, about poverty, about the KKK, about family. It's a period film, and yet these are the conversations being had right now across modern day America. Right, exactly. Yeah, I would just say, I think also that it's, it's, you know, I think all art kind of comments on the time in which it's made, you know, like, and so even though, you know, this film is set in 1940, it could have been set in 2040. Dee, towards the end of the film, there's that really unflinchingly brutal portrayal of the KKK. And I wondered what your sense of that was. It, it, why did you choose to show it so nakedly? Was it that you fear it's being forgotten or you think it's becoming relevant again. What was your sense in that? This has always been relevant. Like lynching isn't something that necessarily stopped. I think it's something that has changed forms. It's something that is like unreported or is not called the same thing. But it's, it's as a country, we're, we're the same as we've always been. I think we're just now seeing. You know what's crazy about that day when we did that scene? That same day, someone sent me something over in the internet mm -hmm. and showed me a lynching that, was ha that took place like recently, yeah. so those tears came from like, are you, are you kidding me? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. So when you look at the uh, American society that you portray there and the one we're in now, your sense is that things haven't changed that much? No, I think that, you know, you know, in the civil rights movement of the 60s, you know, it affected, you know, like the signs over the water fountains came down. So this kind of formalized, like overt segregation was discontinued, but this kind of covert segregation continued and that, that, that hasn't changed. And the film was shot before President Trump came to power. Do you think his presidency is allowing more of this um, sense of unease and grievance to be aired now? 
I think it's emboldened the attitudes that were already there. So like I said, I think these attitudes never died quite. I just think people just stopped saying them out loud. And now Trump has allowed people to now say them out loud again and feel justified and, you know, create this false victim narrative. You followed the Take the Knee protest, obviously, the NFL. Um, is your sense there that that was something that athletes of colour had to do on their own or make their own? Or was that something that white athletes should have joined in with? Well, I think anybody who believes in the ideals, who, who believes that, that things should be equal for everybody should, should participate. I don't think it's necessarily any one person's burden. Like we as a nation, if we're going to move forward, everyone has to take that, has, has to take that stand. And when you were growing up, Mary, did you think that in 2017 we'd be still talking about a movement called Black Lives Matter? Um, no, I didn't think so. I thought that things would change. I thought that things had changed, but when I saw President Obama, um, when he was elected that day, I saw a separation. They, they showed people over here cheering, and then they showed another side that was very pissed off. And that was the first time I saw that, wow, this is really still happening. It's just been revealed now. Mm -hmm. before, before a long time, you know, I was like, well, just like every child in school, things will change. Little, little girls, oh yeah, things are gonna get better. And that day I was like, wow, I can't believe like my subconscious thoughts are, are coming to, you know, to fruit, you know, to the front. So yeah, I thought it would, but you know, here we are. Yeah. Sad. Did you have a last thought on that? No, I would just think that, you know, the issue of race, uh, first of all, I think race is a construct. It's not real, it's an economic construct, but we've all invested in this fiction. And I think that this has become pathological in our country. It's like, people aren't even like aware of it. And that's why with Mudbound, I wanna go back to the idea of inheritance because when you're aware of ideas you've been given, of thoughts you've been given, of attitudes you've been given, then you can have a chance to try to change those. But when you're not acknowledging your inheritance, then you're not dealing with the things that you're doing subconsciously. And you're not dealing with the things that you're passing on to perpetuate these problems. Yeah, and there was, there was little things that happened to me, you know, in the, in the music business that made me be like, are we really still dealing with this? So, you know, I would ask my publicist, you know, can I get this cover or that cover? And they would come back and say things like, no, because you're black. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? This magazine won't allow me to be on a color cover because I'm black? So there, there's always been little things that made me be like, okay, that can't be true. The world will change. But like I said, when I saw President Obama elected, I was like, oh, this is really, really happening. They're really saying this. Mary, this could be a really extraordinary moment uh, for a film. Netflix could be up for an Oscar. The first black female director could be up for an Oscar. There's a lot of noise around this already. Right. I'm excited. I'm so grateful that the called on me. I'm so, I'm happy that I'm a part of something that even can even change the, you know, the world, you know, change how we see everything. This is a, a huge vessel and I'm just happy I'm a part of it. Very, very grateful. Very thankful.